Good morning. Why'd you stop? <laughs> Good morning, all of you. I thank you for uh, giving me an opportunity to come this morning, especially the uh, Mississippi Economic Council. Uh, and to Blake, I do appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I promise that I'll be 10 minutes. I know when we have all these forums and debates, I'm the only one they always say you're out of time, Mr. Dupree. Uh, I don't want anybody to say that this morning, so they put a big clock out here in front of me to make sure that I would see when 10 minutes was, was going to happen. I want to tell you a little bit about Hattiesburg. And the reason I tell you about Hattiesburg is because I'm proud of Hattiesburg. I'm proud that Hattiesburg allowed me to be their mayor for the last three terms. I'm deeply honored to those people who elected me. But I, I want to, you all like football, right? I like football. Well, my, my grandson plays football. He's four years old, you know, but he has a helmet and the shoulder pads and all the stuff that football players have. He plays over Mobile. They play tackle. And they've won one game out of seven. They stink. And they had the one game that they did won. The other team, the little boy was running the ball. And as he was running the ball, his teammate tackled him. And his coach ran out on the field and said, what are you doing? And the little boy looked up, and it's a true story. The little boy looked up at the coach and said, well, I, I tackle him in practice, so I thought I should tackle him in the game, too. <laughs> well, that's the way they practice. The teams didn't really do well. I, wanna, I, I only had one time to go see them. So I'm going to make a comparison for you today, if you would allow me. I'm going to tell you a little about Hattiesburg. And remember your football analogy, if you would. Hattiesburg is the fourth largest city in this state, with the second largest tax base when they start talking about sales tax, which means people like to come to Hattiesburg and shop. They like to come to Hattiesburg and do their health care needs and those kinds of things and be educated. In the past 10 years in non-manufacturing employment, we've grown by 15 percent or 7,000 jobs when the state has grown 3 percent. The past 10 years, we have grown in non-agriculture job employment by 11 percent, or 6,000 jobs. And the state has lost at a rate of 3.5 percent. Hattiesburg is expected to grow in the next eight years at 10 percent, or 10,000 jobs. Now I will tell you about where we are in the state even more, and some of you all have, have heard Mr. Boxdale talk about where we are in the state of Mississippi. We're the highest state with teen pregnancy. We're the number one in obesity. We're the highest in poverty. The highest dropout weight. The lowest graduation rate. The lowest life expectancy for women. The lowest life expectancy for men. And we could go on and on. What makes us different is that in Hattiesburg, we decided one day, and I, I pray God it was the day that they elected me, is that we weren't going to do business the same old way. So what we decided to do in Hattiesburg, it was to put all the people together that had a state in Hattiesburg. We're talking about the educators and the business people, chamber people, everybody who had a state. We're talking about Republicans, Democrats, Green Party, Tea Party, or anybody else that had a party that wanted to name it something. We put everybody together around the table and decided that we wanted to have a better community, that we wanted to have something better for our children. And what was the results? The results were the things I just told you, but there were some other results. Blue Cross Blue Shield said that Hattiesburg, Mississippi is the healthiest city in the state of Mississippi above 10,000. They just did that last month. Yeah, that deserves a hand. You know, in America, the American Planning Association goes across America, and what they do, they look at different cities, and they let you apply to see whether you have a neighborhood in your city is one of the best neighborhoods in America. None, not one neighborhood in Mississippi has ever won as been one of the best neighborhoods in Mississippi, except one. And that was just this past month as well. The American Planning Association said that Hattiesburg has one of the best neighborhoods in the U.S. of A to live in. <laughs> Hattiesburg, though. <laughs> CNN and Forbes magazine that Hattiesburg is one of the best places to launch a business. 
That's because we come together to solve our problems. That's also because what we do is we, we know how, how uh, small businesses is the backbone of our community. Because small businesses is where the rubber meets the road. Small businesses where we, you know, we all wish we could have a Stallion or a Nissan and all those places, all those businesses. But the reality is we don't have that. 95% of America lives off of small businesses. And 60% of people who work, work in small businesses. But you know, we don't treat small businesses like we should. We should treat small businesses better because they bear the load. They can't leave and go anywhere. They have to stay there and they, and they take care of our community. They pay their taxes, maybe when some of the other ones don't pay their taxes. You know, one of the things that I'm proud of too, in 2010, the census said that in Hattiesburg, 24 to 29 year old young people stay. We grew by 27% in Hattiesburg with 24 to 29 year old people. So they now make up 11% of our population. Why? Because we listen to them. You know, I've heard those adage, we want our children to be educated and stay in Mississippi. Well, I want the same thing too. And we heard them, we heard you. And so now in Hattiesburg, they stay. They stay because we listen to them because of our health care, because of our education, because of our cultural stimulation, because of our social stimulation, because we know that 20 years from now, this is their world. And we need to make sure that we prepare their world for them. You know, I'm proud of the fact that during Katrina, we came back faster than anybody else. During this downturn in economy, and this may sound like a Republican, but I haven't raised taxes in 10 years. Don't want to raise taxes because that's not what America wants. That's not what Mississippi wants. But what we have done is become more efficient in what we do because I think that's what you want. You want us to use technology and become more efficient. And use, my mama said you do more with less, and that's what we try to do. And even in this downturn economy where some cities and counties have had to lay off people, we haven't laid off anybody and we've not furloughed anybody. I think that's what people want in Mississippi too. You can't take a state that is impoverished as we are and then lay off people. You got to figure out how you're going to make it work. And that's what we've done in Hattiesburg. So people talk about what makes the, what it makes the difference between me and someone else. Well, you know, I started working at eight years old. I've done everything from working at a slaughterhouse to washing dishes to driving cars. You know, well, that's how I learned how to, to drive, washing cars. I've done everything that you can figure. But not only have I done that, I own my own business. But I also worked for a major corporation called Sears Roebuck when it was called Roebuck. And then I've worked in every branch of government in Mississippi. I worked on the school board for five years. I've been on the Board of Supervisors in Forest County for 10 years. I'm the mayor for 10 years. I understand what happens when the government either cuts taxes, raises taxes, or they, or they have unfunded mandates. I understand that when they do that, that the school board members or members of the Board of Supervisors or mayors or city council people have to figure out, well, what do we do? How are we going to make this work? Nobody else has that opportunity. Nobody else has that experience but us. So just like I told you about the football team that has to make a decision about the quarterback, you got to make a decision about the quarterback. You got to decide which quarterback you're going to put in, which quarterback you're going to play. I've got the experience. I told people the other day, I've carried the water. I've carried the... I've carried the towers. I've been on time for practice. I've done everything that you're supposed to do in order to do this. But I need your help in order to make this happen. You come to Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and you'll see a difference. I'd like to make that difference in Mississippi. I'd like to be a part of making that difference in Mississippi. And I will tell you that you all would have a seat at the table because, as Mr. Barksdale just talked about education, We've got to change education from the beginning to the end. We've got to restructure to make sure that we use our community colleges. We use our universities. We also use our trade unions, too, because they have an excellent program. And that program actually hires people when they finish training. So again, I, I thank all of you all for allowing me to come. I, I thank you all for what you do for Mississippi, because what you do for Mississippi makes a difference in the lives of people who you employ. So I ask that you all will all go out on November the 8th, educate yourself, and then vote for somebody. I just pray that somebody's me. God bless you.